Yaz. It is an absolutely beautiful day out today. It's warm. There is a slight chill in the air. Uh, right now I'm pretty hot because I've been hiking. I'm sweating, but I know once I get perfectly still, that's probably going to change a little bit. I'll probably cool down a bit, but it's unseasonably warm today. So that's pretty nice. So God bless all of you. I'm going to see you shortly here at the tarp shelter. Hi, it's Lindley Oz. I know we probably have somewhat of a weird angle here, but I was trying to get the fire more in the camera than what I usually do. It's nice out today. I've got my coffee and the coffee's tasting pretty good. Really good. So it is a really, really weird winter. I may have mentioned this before, but we have not had any snow except for twice. And both times that we had snow, I recorded. And the first time when I recorded, it was weeks and weeks ago now, there was a decent amount, but nothing overly huge. It looked like more snow than it was back here. And then the other day when I filmed, it was last week back here, there was just a little bit of snow coming down. That's all we've had. And today is supposed to get up in the 60s, I believe. And here it is, the very beginning of February. So it's pretty crazy. I don't remember having a winter time with this little snow. So I'm not complaining, but I mean, I do like nice weather, but at the same time, I think the snow is pretty. And especially with doing the filming back here at the tarp shelter, it's really nice to have some snow. So this is our next episode of Truth Hunters. And I just want to remind you real quick to go get the free app for Truth Hunters because I'm uploading all my Truth Hunters videos first on the Truth Hunters TV show before I upload them to YouTube. So you can get the free app for your phone. If you have an iPhone or you have an Android, there's a free app at the app stores for those for that. And it's awesome because there's a Bible and a daily Bible reading plan and things like that. So it's awesome. There's also a section to take notes and it's also on Roku. If you want to get the app for Roku, you know how on Roku it'll say like Amazon, you have an app for Amazon. Cause I have had people ask me that don't know. And then there's one that says Netflix or whatever. So you do a search for the truth hunters app and you'll find it there. And speaking of Amazon, it's also on Amazon. It's also on Apple TV. So be sure and get the free app. The benefit, like I said, 
is that there is tons of censorship here on YouTube. That's why the Lord has led me to go to TV. So the benefit is that eventually they're going to censor more and more of my videos. It's going to get worse. And you can see it first on the Truth Hunters TV show. So be sure and get the app. So today is just really, really pretty out, really nice. I don't know, do you guys notice a change in the weather patterns? That's supposed to be one of the signs of the end times. And we know that there already are a ton of signs, but there's just this change in the weather. I mean, maybe I'm just developing early Alzheimer's or something, I don't know, I can't remember, but there's just been a lot of strange weather patterns over the last few years that I've noticed. So I didn't know if it was just me or if you all have noticed it too. I live here in Ohio. So what are your thoughts? Strange weather or not? So it's really a lot of work to get back here. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. It's fun, but it's a lot of work to do this back here at the tarp shelter. So this is my studio. Nature is my studio here. Perfect lighting. It's great to sit back here with all of you and hang out with you all here on video and just share the truth of God's word with you, whatever he lays on my heart. We'll see here in a minute once I get talking. I know one thing I want to start with. I saw a post by my good friend, Marty Breeden. Many of you out there probably already know who he is. He's the retired police officer who coded and he had a heavenly experience where he saw Jesus. Um, he's given his warning all over the internet. In fact, I have a video with him giving the message about the two minute warning and about how close we are. So I saw a post by Marty. Not only did Marty tell me about it, but my mother copied me on it and sent it to me in the email. And it's basically talking about, and Marty, if you're watching this, I'm not trying to misquote your post, but I didn't print it out first because I didn't know I was going to talk about it. But it's basically talking about evil assignments, demonic assignments. And these demonic assignments are people who are assigned demonically to people who are truly walking with the Lord, particularly people like Marty or myself or anybody who has a voice in the ministry who's really reaching a lot of people. So these people that are demonic assignments basically are assigned to those of us doing that. And I don't know that you have to be in the ministry or reaching a lot of people. Maybe it could be somebody that's potentially just walking with the Lord and the enemy's really trying to make you stumble. I don't know, but you have to remember anyone who has a voice for the Lord and is reaching a lot of people is a humongous threat to the kingdom of hell. So these people are satanically assigned to those of us who are reaching a lot of people for the kingdom of heaven on this earth. And they try to do everything that they can to destroy us, take us out, make us stumble, um, just shut us up, distract us. And I know many of you out there probably already know if you've been watching me for a while, about the intense spiritual warfare and demonic attacks that not only myself, but many of my sisters and brothers who are truly doing the Lord's work have been going through over the past year or two. For some, the major attacks have just started in the last year. For others, it's been the last few years. Nonetheless, they are the most demonic, hideous, horrible attacks ever. I don't even know how to, how to explain it to you. And I sure wish I could share every detail, but I can't. I'm not at liberty. There are other people involved and things like that. And that's not cool to get on here in a video and name names or give details. And even if you don't name names, those people will know you're talking about them. And then whoosh, the fiery darts that are already flying flame up even more so it's not cool to do that but i can only tell you that it has indeed been the most hellish attack i can tell you for sure that i totally wholeheartedly believe in demonic assignments where there are people who are just filled with the enemy who are coming against those of us 
who are reaching many people with the truth. Now, don't misunderstand me. As I said previously, there's probably also people who aren't reaching a lot of people. You're just a everyday normal person doing your thing, but you're truly walking with the Lord and the enemy's trying to get you to stumble. But right now I'm just focusing on those of us who are reaching a lot of people with the truth of God's word. Those of us who are standing on the truth, those of us who are not backing down or bowing to the enemy and these evil people, depending upon your particular situation, if it's a narcissist personality type that you're dealing with, which by the way, is the spirit of Jezebel. And I believe if you watched a video I did several months ago, I talked about how this is a new breed of Jezebel. The Lord laid on my heart that this was a particular breed of Jezebel that was specifically released for this hour. It's not like the previous Jezebel that's been around. It's much more evil and it operates with a spirit of Satan. So two, but this nasty spirit of Jezebel narcissist is huge right now. And if you're dealing with one of those types of people, they will constantly come at you and accuse you and shame you and try to destroy you. And then when you try to get rid of them, they will come back and pretend to be your friend and act like they are just your best friend in the world and they just love you and care about you. And they'll basically, I don't know another way to put it, they'll kiss your butt and they'll lure you back and they lure you back just so they can wait for a time. Some do it right away, some wait a few weeks, some might wait a few months, but they lure you back and then they wait for a certain amount of time and then they suddenly start acting like a narcissist again, just being evil and cruel and horrible to you. They play with your mind. They make you feel like you're just this horrible person. Everything's your fault. They never apologize. But here's what I was going to say that the Lord revealed to me. They make you apologize to them constantly. If you don't apologize, even though you don't know what you did and you don't apologize, and you don't make peace. In fact, when you do apologize, they'll usually give you more heck over it. They'll treat you like scum of the earth for a while when you do apologize, but they'll force you to apologize. And if you don't apologize to them, life will be complete hell for you until you do. They will silence you. They will give you the silent treatment. They will be abusive to you. They may, I don't know, go dark on you, do whatever till you come to them and you apologize to them. Now, don't get me wrong. The only way to get rid of a narcissist is to go dark. So going dark doesn't make you a narcissist. By going dark, that means you go no contact. That's the only way. And when you go no contact, it drives them nuts. And they will try to reach out to you and try to get a hold of you. And they will pull at every heartstring you have until you respond and that's where it gets really hard this narcissist jezebel spirit is so foul so horrible so hideous that worldly articles even worldly reputable psychology articles refer to it as an epidemic that's right an epidemic now you may be sitting there thinking narcissism is uh, somebody who likes to look at themselves in the mirror and it's all about their looks no go research it. It is much more than that. It is about projecting themselves onto you. It is about gaslighting you. Like you, you confront them kindly with something and they will suddenly blow up at you and start cussing you out, calling you names, accusing you, turn it around on you and bring things up. You don't even know you ever did because you probably didn't. They'll make it up or they'll twist it to where it's something that you did, but you didn't do. And by the end of it, you're wondering what this all got started with to begin with. You've now forgotten what it was or you're too scared. You're too scared to continue addressing them with whatever it was that you were trying to address because they've just blown up at you and rejected you. They'll storm off angry at you and then you have to apologize. In fact, it can even get so bad that you have to write them an email or speak to them verbally. They prefer something written by the way, so they can use it against you. But so that you have something that you write to them where you confess to things you never even did 
for the sake of peace because you are so tormented by what they're doing to you that you end up doing just that. It's evil, it's wicked, and it's horrible. And this Jezebelic spirit is coming against so many people, whether you're in the ministry or not, this Jezebelic narcissist spirit is at an all time high. It is destroying people. It will kill you. And I'm not kidding. Now there are narcissists who would actually murder someone and whatnot, but I'm not even talking about that kind of murder. I'm talking about it will murder you from the stress and the torment that you go through. You will have all sorts of physical ailments from being in constant stress and torment. In fact, many victims of narcissist abuse end up getting what's called narcissist PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. There's one that you get from narcissists. You live in extreme fear. You wonder what's being done to you behind your back because I think from what I understand, most narcissists will cheat. You may not even suspect that they would ever cheat. They cheat, they lie, they usually have a whole handful of other outlets to get their sexual favors from, even though you could be, you could be um, having intimacy with them constantly, they will still go cheat for the sake of cheating. They like to sneak, they like to cheat, they like to lie, they get a, a high off of it. It, it satisfies them. They don't like to be caught though. They don't like it when you're suspicious. And that's one of the big reasons, aside from the fact they're trying to exert control by inflicting fear. That's one of the biggest reasons why they gaslight you. That whole arguing thing I told you about, that is an example of gaslighting or projecting. They're screaming and yelling at you and cussing at you while at the same time accusing you that you're being mean and you're screaming and cussing at them. They'll tell you you're abusing them. You're thinking, what on earth? They're the ones abusing you. If they accuse you of cheating, more than likely, they're cheating on you. They accuse you of lying, they're lying to you. Everything that they do, they are accusing you of doing to where if you hear it so much, you begin to become brainwashed to where even though you know you're not an adulterer or an adulteress, you're walking around with this constant fear of everything. Like, oh, what if this guy who's in the ministry, that's just a ministry partner, what if he texts me about some work we have to do? I'm gonna get accused of something. So like you're living in fear of things that are normal, that you're not even guilty of doing, but you're so horrified that you're going to be accused of doing something because these people are so vicious. I almost am convinced they're soulless humans. So you're afraid of everything. You're afraid of them. You're afraid of what they're doing behind your back. You're afraid of what they're gonna do when they're with you. You're afraid to speak. You're afraid to say anything. Like, it doesn't matter what you say, they'll find something to nitpick, to start a fight with you about. It could be the way you look, the way you walk, the tone in your voice. I mean, with a narcissist, it doesn't matter. You could just sit there. If you're not talking enough, they'll say something about it and condemn you for it. If you're talking too much, they'll say something about it and condemn you for it. If you're talking in moderation, they'll find a flaw in the tone in your voice or the look on your face. Can you imagine living like that every day? If you've never been with a narcissist in your life, whether it's a friendship, uh, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, a person you're close to, whatever, imagine living each and every day like that. And then what happens, I forget the word for it. I'm sure that many of you out there will remember and put it in the comments or during my premiere of this video on YouTube, you might tell me, but I can't think of the word for it, but there's a syndrome that's, uh, the, there's a name of a syndrome where basically the, the victim, like a kidnapped person, a person who's been kidnapped, falls in love with their captor, okay? Because of the constant abuse they're receiving, it's like a rubber band. What they do is they abuse you and abuse you and abuse you, then they'll go through time periods where they treat you nice and loving. So then all of a sudden they're rescuing you 
and then they're abusing you again. And what this does is I've read about it. It creates a chemical imbalance within you to where you become addicted to this, even though it's sick and twisted and it's painful emotionally, like you don't want it. You become addicted to it. You're constantly being abused and then you're being rescued and you're being abused and rescued. And so you become addicted to this narcissist, demonic, satanic, wicked, evil Jezebel thing. I can't even call them human. I'm sorry. I know that sounds terrible. I know everybody needs prayer but it's hard. Okay. I don't, I don't know. That's another thing I'll bring up in a second. I hope I don't forget. Well, I'll just bring it up now. So I have had several, I have had several close friends in the ministry. I won't say their names because it's kind of a sketchy subject. Okay. And we discussed this. And in fact, there's times I feel like the Lord told me this. But because I don't know much about it, other than we know that Antichrist is in this situation or falls into this category, I just can't accept it. So I don't know. I'm not saying I believe this or don't believe it. I just don't know. Many of us who have studied like the Nephilim and the fallen angels and just all that stuff. We know about the book of Enoch and things like that. We know there's some really crazy stuff that the devil can do. And we know that the enemy, Satan, mimics everything God does. Of course, it's not like God's things. It's always evil. And the end result is always evil. We know there will be an Antichrist. The Antichrist, that is. There's many Antichrist spirits. But there's going to be the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is going to be Satan in the flesh. Okay? It's going to be a man's body. And just like Judas Iscariot... Satan comes and dwells inside of him. So there's going to be that. So that being said, this is really weird. Okay. I don't want to get a bunch of garbage for this because I'm not saying I know this for sure or that I totally believe it. In fact, I just admitted I struggle to believe it because I don't know much about it. But, and I'm going to have to tend to the fire in a second. But um, is it possible, is it possible that there are actually, oh, well, wait, before I say that, the Bible tells us we never know when we are entertaining angels unaware. doesn't tell us what kind of angels. It just says angels. And we know that heavenly angels can take the form of flesh and blood human beings. They can speak to us, do things for us, whatever. If that's the case, is it possible that there could actually be people on this earth that were actually brought into this world for this time period that have been alive and well and living who at the time of conception, instead of a human spirit, they were instead given a demon spirit. And I'm not saying God gave them the demon spirit. I don't think God would do that, but maybe he allows it because we know that God does allow evil to fulfill his purpose. He allows evil for many reasons. Is it possible that there are actual human beings, body-wise, who don't even have a human spirit, but instead they actually have a demon spirit, like a demonic prince? I don't know. I mean, that's one of those weird things. There's very little in the Bible about it. Like I said, we know about the Antichrist. The Bible says there will be many Antichrists. Okay? There will be one Antichrist. But there will also be many spirits of Antichrist. So we know that this Jezebelic spirit, especially this one that we're seeing today, is definitely an Antichrist spirit. Okay? And we know that the Bible tells us we never know when we are entertaining angels unaware. Of course, that doesn't tell us that they could actually be humans that have been born into this world with an angelic spirit. So there's very little in the Bible about that. So I guess what I'm asking, because it sounds totally crazy, is it possible that some of these demonic assignments, are they demon-possessed human beings who are just totally filled with demons. They do have a human spirit, but they're just taken over by demons. 
Or is it possible that there are actually demons that have a human body? Now, here's the kicker. When the Lord was speaking this to me, or I feel it was the Lord, like over 50 times, I was in a particular situation. And you know how you know when the Lord is speaking to you. But this is so crazy sounding to me that I've had trouble accepting the Lord told me this. So that's why I say I don't know. But the other thing that was spoken to me, there are some who know what they are. Because if God chooses to allow it to be revealed to that person's brain, then they know. But there are many who don't know what they are. Like these people think that they're humans. See, you have a flesh brain. Your flesh brain only knows what has been put into it in this life. And if it's anything spiritual, it's only because God has allowed that to be revealed to you. So your flesh brain isn't going to necessarily know. Your flesh brain is separate from your spirit brain. So the spirit brain of these people knows what they are, but their flesh brain does not know because it hasn't been revealed. They think they're just normal everyday human beings living on this planet. So just an interesting question to ask. I'm going to tend to the fire while you're thinking about it. Of course, you're not going to miss me because I'm going to be right back here in the video. So let me tend to the fire and then we'll continue this discussion. I'm going to cook some eggs real quick. So I've got a little bit of butter. Hopefully you can see okay here. Well, I guess it's more than a little bit of butter. But I got some butter here and the pan. Whoo! Now that's hot. Look at that. That's what you call flaming. <laughs> Take my heat glove here. Ooh, man. Okay, so I've actually got the pan hot enough. I can probably cook the eggs in the pan. Or I can start them in the pan before I put them into the fire, okay? Let me adjust the camera, hold on. You may have a harder time seeing me, but you've seen enough of me in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and put some eggs in here. That pan's so hot. And you can cook the egg just near this fire. Wow. And I also brought some bread. And I'm just going to lay my bread on a rock. I don't really care. Because you can actually cook a steak or whatever on the hot coals and be fine. Let's see if I get this a little closer. Hopefully you can still see it. So the eggs are cooking. I've got my spatula. Let me go and put this on here. I got two pieces of bread. It's going to be toasty. I don't care when I'm out camping and whatever. I don't care if I get dirt or ash on my food. I mean, it's just part of being outdoors. I'm going to use my foil as a plate, I guess, in the pan because I also forgot to bring my plate. So you can see the eggs, hopefully, cooking. There you go. You can see the eggs cooking. They're not really sizzling like they were. So let's fix that. So we're gonna fix that. It's just really hot by this fire. I'm gonna put this bread over here. I don't know if you can see. You don't need to see my face. I mean, as long as you can, the most important thing right now is the food. So I just got a leaf or a piece of dirt or something in my egg and I don't care. So that'll cook a little bit better there. It'll add a little flavor, flavor. So I can't hold this hot cast iron too long though. Because even though these are special fire gloves, see what happens? So we're going to get those eggs toasty. 
and then turn them. But I need my other hand to do that with. Gonna smoke in my eyes. Ooh, I got some on the outside, and I feel like the smell of burning eggs. Boy, when my son was here this weekend, he and I cooked on here, and they turned out perfect. They didn't stick like this. Maybe I have to do this when my son's here. We get more like a scrambled egg. Let's we'll see how my bread is doing. Oh, my bread's actually toasting. Oh, wow, look at that. Check it out. Toasting the bread. This is going to be good. I wish I had some bacon, too. I know I have a lot of pork fans out there. You guys, my pork fans who get all excited when I cook pork product and say nice things to me. I didn't want to offend anybody, so I didn't bring bacon. There's some people that get offended over that, so... All right, I think these are done. I'm going to set it aside, set it over here. My bread's still toasting. And then here you can see, actually I'll just drop it lower so you can see it better. There you go. I think I'm going to go get my, uh, my spork. Okay, so now I am sitting Indian style on the ground on the dirty ground and I think my pan's okay to hold in my hand now but here is my egg I still got the sniffles from this cold it stinks that I didn't bring my seasoning though the egg's still cooking it's gonna be hot I'm gonna sit that down it is hot actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to put it on the foil. Hold on. I'm going to have to make the leg up here a little bit bigger to even out the camera somewhat. There. Now it's more even. All right. So I backed away from the fire a little bit. My toast is about done. It's easier. I don't want to burn any more holes in my fire gloves. So I'm taking out the remnant of the egg. It's not the remnant, it's the egg remnant. So now I'm gonna put a bite here, it is a big bite. It is a big messy bite of egg. It's not like a gunshot. I hope people aren't hunting deer across the way. There are people that live way over that way. Cause I'm not wearing orange. Okay, let's see. You know what? I'm not gonna edit that out because because we're all human and it's fun to be human. It's fun to be an imperfect human. Oh look, there's a piece of leaf. I'm gonna eat it. Leave me alone. This is good. You know, I'm surprised. It doesn't have any salt or anything on it. Oh, my toast. I forgot all about my toast. Okay. Well, it's not toasty enough. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, good. I know it's nothing fancy. It's hard to get anything fancy back here. All right, here comes a big bite. Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. The train is choo-chooing. I'm purposely being, oh my gosh, hot. My knees are getting hot. I'm purposely being nerdy because it's fun. Oh, look at this piece. This is fun. Watch this. Oh, you know what? I forgot to pray about the food. Father God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for not praying first, but thank you for this food that you have blessed me with and let it be a blessing to my body. And let it be a blessing to those watching it that they might not be yoked together with unbelievers. <laughs> All right. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I've never really been one of those women. Okay, well, I take that back. 
when I was younger, like, uh, I don't know, teens and 20s, early 20s, I felt like I had to look perfect and be perfect all the time. And I remember I went on a date. You know how when you're younger and you go on a date with somebody for the first few times, especially the first time, and you go out to eat at a restaurant and you're trying to be really careful. Every time I did that, something inevitably happened. So, <clears throat> so one time I was eating something Italian. I usually would get salad. But I decided to eat something Italian with chicken in it. So I went to take a bite of the chicken and as soon as it got to right here, instead of going in my mouth, I bowled off the fork down my shirt and went inside of my bra that was way too big for me. You know, one of those bras, you gotta look like you have something. So it rolled inside my bra and I had to pick it out. But that wasn't as bad. I think it was at the same date when I walked into the place. There was some, one of you know those women that just look really good and all the guys are checking her out. You can tell she's doing it on purpose. And she's wearing the mini skirt and all that, trying to walk like all like, I'm, I'm hot and I knew it. So she's walking like that and she has a big streamer of toilet paper hanging out her dress down to the floor. I have to admit, I laughed. I thought, ha, ha, ha. I know that's terrible. But, uh, yeah. But those are like those embarrassing things that happen at restaurants. Another time, during my party days, when I wasn't living for the Lord. Am I talking with my mouth full? Mm. So, man, my knee's getting hot. In my party days when I wasn't living for the Lord, this would be better with butter on it. I was sitting there drinking a beer. I was at like a, like at one of those bars that has a dance floor. I don't even want to tell you about things I did then, but I'll tell you about this. So there was people there from my work, a nurse, because I was a nursing assistant. And she's sitting there with her husband. I'm trying to be all nice and I'm talking. And I talk with my hands, if you've noticed. So I'm talking with my hands like that and my hand hits her husband's brand new beer, knocks it over, it goes flying toward him, dumps over right in his lap. Mm, I got brownie points for that. I'm just joking. Boy. And she was like the mean nurse at work, the strict nurse that everybody was always kissing her butt to get on her good side. I probably made her really mad. So I did that. Then another time I drank too much. I was out there trying to show off on the dance floor. I had these big clunky high heels on. I'm twirling all around. And I almost fell. Serves me right. I was like the girl with toilet paper. That was my situation where I was almost as bad from an embarrassing perspective as the woman with the toilet paper. Lynn's funny moments. This bread would be better with butter, for sure. I was trying to think of some more funny moments, but I can't think of any. Probably when I see myself on camera editing this video with my cheeks pooped out like a chipmunk eating bread. Oh, I can think of some really embarrassing ones, but they're too gross. They're way too gross and some people would get really offended if I told it. It has to do with things that people do that they don't do around other people. 
and you either blame on the elephant under your chair or you try to blame it on somebody else. Oh, here's a good one. It's kind of gross, but at least it doesn't involve that other thing. So this was when I was in my late teens, early 20s. I was at the grocery store and my nose starts running and I literally have nothing to wipe it with, nothing. I mean, it was like right there about to come out. And so I looked around to make sure nobody could see me. And sure enough, nobody was around. So I went like that to wipe it, like flicked it, and it went flying. And uh, I think it landed on a cereal box. Um, I looked up and it was at Kroger. There was like a camera right there. So I hurried up and went into the cash lane and paid and got out. That was embarrassing. Anyways, I guess it's time to go. I have only very little bread left. Maybe we'll do another Lindley Oz embarrassing stories another time and cooking. God bless all of you. Let's get back to the message. This has just been a little break for the message. So we're gonna get back to the message. Are there demons? walking among us believe it or not you can choose to believe it believe it or not believe it or not and you know what it's getting rather toasty no pun intended Ooh, my shoe's getting hot by the campfire. Mm. So this is the first time I've worn these boots. Go check it out. There's this place called Wiggies. The guy lives in Colorado. But um, he makes the special insulated stuff with something called Lamalite. And it's better than anything else. It's awesome. Go look it up. And he tells, he has videos. He tells all about it. But I got these boots from Wiggies. They're men's boots. They're not ladies. I went ahead and bought men's. So I had to buy them in a size 7 because I wear an 8.5. Well, I'm almost 5'7", or I could be 5'7", or maybe close to 5'7". So I wear an 8.5. So anyways, here they are. Wiggies with Lamalite boots. There you go. Nice boots on. So I broke them in today. The cornfield just scuffed them all up. I'm like really, really picky. You know how when you get a new pair of shoes and you, it's like a new pair of white gym shoes. Um, don't want to get anything on them. So I didn't want to mess up the leather. So I decided to break these in and wear them. So that's my Wiggies boots. And now we're going to go back to the show. God bless all of you. And thank you for joining me for eggs and toast and embarrassing moments with Lindley Oz and bread on my face. And here's my Wiggies boots so you can see them better. So I guess the question could be, are there demons walking among us? interesting so I tended to the fire I got myself some more coffee and so we were talking about basically are there demons walking among us in these end times who are assigned to us to do damage to us to destroy us take us out distract us confuse us keep us busy worrying about other things it's a good question. I'm sure some people will say, no, no, that's not possible right away. And others might say, yes, it's an interesting topic. What about this? For those of you who think it is possible, why don't you guys find some scripture in the Bible? Help me out to find any other scriptures in the Bible that might support that such a thing could indeed be true. I'm not positive, so don't quote me on this, but I've heard that Russ Dizdar has done some episodes on that and that he makes a pretty good case that there are indeed demons in the flesh walking among us. 
if that is true, that goes right into the whole sleeper cell thing. And when I say sleeper cells, sleeper cells are actually terrorists that are over here, let's say in the USA, living normal lives. They get the call that it's time to act. And all of a sudden they start conducting terrorism here in this nation. So what I mean when I say sleeper cells, I'm talking about the same type of thing except demonic sleeper cells. Are there these people who have been born into this world for this time, who are actually demonic entities in a body of flesh? Many may not know what they are, because remember I explained how the flesh brain is different from the head brain. So many don't know what they are. So if that's the case, that would also make more sense about these demonic sleeper cells. They're all of a sudden becoming more intensely evil. I know people who were with somebody like maybe married for years and years and all of a sudden out of the blue here in the last year or so, approximately, their spouse just suddenly changed, like turned evil. It's really weird and I'm not kidding. I know a lot of people that has happened to. And then there are those of us who married somebody believing they were something else. And then once we were married to them, they suddenly changed, but they were already evil to begin with. Well, they're all already evil to begin with. I think you know what I mean. I'm hearing thunder and I didn't bring my rain poncho. Good thing it's not freezing cold and that I'm not super far from my house. So the question again is, are there demons walking among us in the body of flesh? Ooh, kind of freaky. Or are there human beings? Oh my gosh. That is like a massive, massive, like hundreds of birds. Wow, I wish you guys could see them. And I am hopefully under the tarp. Oh no, they like to fly over me when I'm out here and then they start pooping. You can probably hear them. Anyways, are there tons of demons among us in the flesh or are there just demon possessed people in the flesh? I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you see this. Hold on. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll move in the it doesn't look like as many right now because they're all perched in the tree. But you can certainly hear them. Tons of them. There's a ton right there in that tree. I don't know if you can see. Well, wouldn't that be hilarious if one pooped and it landed right on my camera lens? I better not talk about it. It might happen. Okay, well, we've seen enough of the birds. Okay, so I probably got my camera all over the place here with all sorts of different, slightly different angles. So, oh, by the way, there's actually been bees out today. Bees. It's February and there's bees flying around. That could be normal. I don't know, but it doesn't seem normal to me. Well, sounds like I'm at a bird farm. <laughs> So anyhow, all I do know, my friends, is we are living in a very, very evil, evil, wicked hour, and it's only going to get worse, worse and worse and worse. And I believe that many of us are not totally prepared. And one very important thing, whether it's demons in the flesh or demon possessed people, the book of Daniel tells us there is a time of the wearing down of the saints, wearing us down, wearing us down, taking us out by doing so. Many of us are being worn down, run down, beat up, wore down to where we hardly have any physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional strength. We just feel like we're hanging by a thread and we can't take any more. We're so weak. And how does it wear us down physically? Well, because 
really, really serious stress like that and living under stress like that will affect your physical body and your health. So wear you down in every way you can, take you out, wear you down. But you know what? If you're sitting here watching this video and you're going through some major spiritual attacks in your life and you're feeling weak and frustrated, I just want to encourage you. I know what that's like. Still going through it now. How long? How long have I been telling you been going through it? Okay? God is there for you. Hey, you know what? Lily Yaz doesn't always feel the presence of the Lord with her when she's going through stuff. I don't. I don't always hear from the Lord when I'm going through stuff. Wow, like, you know, sometimes when I'm going through the worst things in my life, I don't feel the presence of the Lord or hear from him. And I just came across a Psalm the other day. I want to say it, it was Psalm 21 or 22. I can't remember, but I was reading it and it's kind of the prophecy of Jesus, you know, when he went to the cross to die, but it's my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, I'm crying out to you. I'm crying out to you and you don't answer me. I'm crying out to you. I'm in anguish and you don't provide me comfort. Why? And that's what many of us are asking. Why? Why is it during some of our toughest times that we feel like the Lord isn't there? Well, the Lord is always telling us that we need to have faith and trust him. And trusting him means that we know 100%, and this is a hard one, we know 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is there, whether we hear him, see him, feel him or not, we know. And that we have to trust that he will get us through. Another way that we trust the Lord is by obeying him when we're going through things. There's always an easy way out in our flesh, but that easy way out, its end result is actually more torment and it's more suffering and the end result can also sometimes be an eternity in hell. So what seems like the easiest way isn't necessarily the easiest way. For instance, if you are with one of these Jezebelic narcissists, okay, I urge you to flee. If you don't believe, I mean, whether or not you believe to go get a divorce, I mean, if you're actually being destroyed, emotionally and mentally this is my opinion okay i know some of you are going to argue with me about it but the bible says the bible tells us that a man would lay down his life for his spouse okay or give his life for her but it doesn't say that a man has to sit there and let his spouse kill him the bible doesn't say that a woman has to sit there and let her spouse kill her like if you were with somebody that tried to physically murder you do you believe that god would expect you to stay in that how is it any different if someone's murdering you in another fashion it's murder either way you can murder somebody with your words so all i can say to you is pray about it and if you're in a situation like that at least if nothing else get away physically separate yourself if you don't believe in divorce and you feel convicted about it, at least get away physically if you can. And I know there's gonna be people that are mad at me. I'm not, I'm not trying to promote divorce. I know that a divorce is a sin. But the question is, the Bible does tell us if you're unequally yoked or if somebody commits adultery against you or cheats on you, that you can get out of that. That is thunder. But, um. I guess that's another topic we'll have to research. But the question would be, is that person truly saved? Are you unequally yoked? Because how could anybody, the Bible tells us that we produce the fruit of the spirit. How can anybody really be a child of God and not have the love of the father in them? And somebody that evil obviously does not have the love of the Lord. And if they're just destroying you like that, God does not expect you just to sit there and be destroyed like that he really doesn't so if nothing else at least physically get away put some space between you uh, you can try counseling i can only tell you that if you're with a true jezebelic narcissist 
counseling won't work because they will agree to go to counseling with you to fix you and they will actually try to trick the counselor and then they will take everything that they learn in counseling and use it against you so hey you know but god is a huge god and he's bigger than everything and he can do miracles that is true but i just wanted to say that i know that's not a popular thing among christians to say separate yourself but if someone is really killing you and destroying you and you've given them chance after chance you've tried counseling you've done everything in your power to try to fix the situation you've leaned on god just pray about it and see what the lord would direct you to do i have people who write to me and say that they're in this situation what do they do they don't believe in divorce they feel convicted against it what do they do well i would say to you then at least physically separate yourself do what you can do go stay with a family member or a friend temporarily and pray about it that's all i can tell you to do okay whether or not there's a divorce is between you and between god and depends on your situation it's always best not to do that okay and if you have gotten a divorce god will forgive you if you ask him to forgive you if you but if you have unjustly gotten a divorce god will forgive you i have people who write to me that feel like they're condemned because they've gotten a divorce god will forgive you okay keep in mind the big question is because a, a narcissist jezebel let me just tell you this most of them claim to be christians that's right they have everybody else fooled that they're Christians. And I'm here to tell you, most of them that are claiming to be Christians, that are very narcissist, are not true Christians. Okay, they're not. You can argue me if you want. The Bible tells us to judge the fruit that's produced. Go study narcissism first before you judge me for what I just said. They're very insidiously evil, wicked people. So go check it out for yourself. There's no way that the spirit of the Lord could be living in somebody who is that wicked and evil. Okay, true salvation produces fruit. You have a conscience. Most, even most unsaved people have a conscience, okay? They feel convicted of things. A true narcissist has no conscience at all. They never feel convicted for anything. When they apologize to you, they're not even truly sorry. All right, they're not sorry at all. They are never convicted for anything. They think that everything is owed to them. They're big time double standard, hypocrites. They can do whatever they want. They have a right to do whatever they want, but you don't. You are their property. I know I'm gonna take a lot of heat for some things I've said in this video, but I can't. But I just can't lie to people. I'm not going to tell some woman that's sitting there being abused and beaten to a pulp emotionally, mentally, physically, maybe she's got kids she's trying to care for and she's just being beat the crap out of. There's no way that I can sit here with a good conscience and say, there's no way I can sit here with a good conscience and say, you know what, you're a sinner if you leave that situation stay there and take the beating maybe you'll be like timex remember the old commercials takes the beating and keeps repeating how can i as a christian with the spirit of the lord in me sit there and tell somebody that and have a good conscience about it i can't if you're being beaten to a pulp physically emotionally mentally spiritually and everything like that to the point it's killing you run that's the truth hey those of you want to come and give me heat for that, I think you need to pray about that because that's a cruel thing to do. Or there's men. I'm not going to single out women as the abused victims. There's men out there. You're trying to do everything you can and maybe your wife is like beating you up all the time, physically, emotionally, verbally, mentally, to the point it's killing you. You can't be there for your children. You can't even hardly do your job. It's literally destroying you. You've tried everything you can do and there's nothing else left. You don't have to sit there and take that. Run. 
That's the truth. Now, when I say run, whether or not you divorce, that's between you and God. You pray about that. I don't know your personal situation, but at least get away physically to where you can have some solitude and some peace of mind from time to time. Do it. <laughs> Seriously. That is not a sin. There is no sin involved in getting the heck away from somebody who's killing you. We don't oftentimes think about it that way. We think about, oh, if there was some woman or man and their spouse had tried to kill them with a knife or shoot at them, and I said, well, you need to get away from that person. There wouldn't be a single person probably that would say anything to me about saying that. Everybody would be in, in agreement with that. Okay, but there are those out there who will find fault with what I said because it's not a gun or a knife or a weapon. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 that our battles are not against flesh and blood, but against these principalities and demons and that we have spiritual weapons. Well, the enemy has spiritual weapons. And even though our battle is not flesh and blood, it's these demonic entities. They will use the flesh as demonic weapons and they will use people who are closest to you they sure will and it, like i said if you've tried everything that you can and you've done it all and you've prayed and prayed and prayed and done it all like i just said and nothing has worked and it is literally tearing you down and destroying you your body your health your just everything there is no sin involved and just physically separating yourself. As long as you're not doing it for a sinful reason or anything involving affairs or another man or another woman in your life, it's totally because of the constant abuse and you need peace of mind. I don't believe there's any sin involved in that. So it is what it is. So today's conversation has been great. God bless all of you. This has gotten rather lengthy and I try to keep them to a certain length to go up on Truth Hunters. But uh, you'll see this first on Truth Hunters and then a couple days later I'll put it on YouTube. But God bless all of you. Please don't forget to pray for our brothers and sisters all over this world. And pray for the lost and unrepentant because time is so short. It really, really is. Time is so incredibly short. Also, if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, Make sure you subscribe. Check your subscription if you are. Make sure you're still subscribed. People are unsubscribed constantly. If you're not following me on Truth Hunters, remember, as I said in the start of this video, download the app for your iPhone, your Android, Apple TV, Amazon, or Roku. And the app is free. And there is a daily Bible reading plan, a Bible, notes, and so forth. And I am nearly 100% viewer supported. I am paying a decent amount of money to have this on the TV network, as I just told you. So I need your guys' help now more than ever. Donations for this ministry have been way down again for a while. So I really need your support so I can continue having this on the Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, Android, Apple phone, whatever. So please consider a gift. So into this ministry, if you feel so led to do so, it would be great. You can do so via my PayPal or my PO box check or money order. If you're watching this on Truth Hunters, there is a section at the bottom that says more. And if you click on that, it takes you to a link where you can donate. I also have the link below this video on YouTube and the information if you feel led to give a gift. Those of you who do give, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to continue doing this if it wasn't for you. So I truly appreciate you guys sewing into this ministry. I don't get to thank all of you. So I want to thank you this way. I know who each and every one of you are. And so I'm speaking to each and every one of you personally from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. You don't know what you're doing by helping to support me. I reach people all over the world. I get emails and letters from people telling me how blessed they were. There's people who have been close to suicide or, or people who were going through something and something in my message spoke to their heart. So, oh, I've also had a lot of lost people who've written to me who came to Jesus through one of my videos. So 
by supporting this ministry, you're helping people come to Jesus. You're helping people come back to Jesus. You're helping people with a broken heart. So God bless you and thank you so much for your financial gifts. I hope you've been able to hear me okay over all of the birds. I'm just using my phone microphone, so I don't know, but uh, they're still here and not going away. It could be kind of nice to some of you. I don't know, maybe you like that nature sounds. But God bless all of you. Thank you so much for everything. Let's just say a quick prayer before we close. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, just thank you and praise you, Father, that we are mighty warriors. We are victors. We are conquerors, Lord. Father, we are not slaves to the enemy. And I forgot to mention this, Father, when I was talking about that Jezebelic narcissist spirit, but it wants us to apologize because it wants us to be a slave to it. Father, it wants us to serve it. We will serve nothing else but you, Lord. And we just give you praise, thanks, honor, and glory, Father, that we have you in our lives. Thank you that you are a mighty God, a wonderful God, a fair and a just God, no matter what we're going through, even though we may not be feeling your presence or hearing from you right now, Lord. And even though many of us are going through the worst trials of our lives, Father, we trust that you're here. We know that your word promises us that you are here. We know that as Christians on this planet, we will suffer, Father. But our promise isn't eternal life here. Our promise and our victory isn't necessarily here. Our true victory is in getting through the suffering, Father. And our true victory is when we are finally home with you. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you and we just worship you. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you that this video will not be hindered from reaching those who need to see it, Father. We just honor you and glorify you in everything that we say and everything that we do. And we lift up our hands to you, Father, in humble surrender, Lord, that we are free from the bondages of the flesh and we are alive to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, everybody, and God bless you. Please be abundantly blessed. And please, please know that the Lord your God does hear and has heard your prayers. He has collected your tears. He is right there with you, going through it with you, even if you don't feel him or hear him. He is closer than ever. The only reason that you're not hearing him or feeling him as much with the exception of maybe unrepentant sin, or maybe he's trying to teach you something. But other than those things is because we are in the end times and spiritual wickedness here on this earth is at an all time high. You have to remember Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 tells us that it's principalities and powers of darkness and of the air. Okay. Sometimes those things can block our communications, especially when we're going through it because other forces are at work. So you just have to be strong in the Lord and you have to trust him. Don't take your suffering to mean necessarily that God is angry with you. That, that may not be the case, okay? If you've repented for your sin and you're truly trying, okay, repentance doesn't mean you're necessarily perfect. It's a condition of your heart and you're really trying and you're just still going through hell. God isn't angry with you. God loves you very, very much. He just wants you to surrender your life to him completely and totally and trust in him and wait on him. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. So go forward. After you watch this video, go forward with the Lord. Stay on the straight path, the straight and narrow path, because the straight and narrow path is the one that leads to Jesus Christ. The wide path is the path in which the lost will take. Stay on the straight and narrow because only few, my friends, will enter in through the narrow gate. God bless you. Mm -hmm.